for viewers. Uh, this afternoon, we are very fortunate to have in the studios of NCN, the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, the Honorable Anil Nandala. Uh, so I would like to welcome you, Anil, to this program. Thank you very much, and it's a ple pleasure to be here, and uh, yeah. good afternoon to your viewers. Yeah. Um, the issue that I really want you to discuss this afternoon, let me give you a preamble first of all, so you will have an idea as to what is really taking place in Barbies at the moment with regards to the sugar industry. <coughs> as you know, Rosal Estate was closed down in 2017 by the AFC APNU government. At that time, when the entire workforce was sent off, some of the workers who were involved in the cane cutting gangs we were severed and they were paid and because of you and the PPP government and the PPP in opposition at that time fought so that they were able to get their severance pay. But some of the workers opted to continue working and they were absorbed, some of them, about 200, 253 of them, or a little bit more than that, were absorbed by Rosal, by Albion Estate as cane cutters and another 93 persons who at that time uh, was also involved cutting cane at Rosal, from the East Bank of Burbies, they were sent to Blairmont Estate and they agreed. And so the workers who did not get jobs, who were com completely severed, they got their severance pay, as I said, b based on your input and based on input of the our party who were then in opposition. Now, over the last 10 days, we have had a very serious development in terms of the sugar industry developing here. Rosal Estate is slated to be reopened by the 15th of September. Now these cane cutters who are presently involved in working at Albion and Blairmont have been told that they have an option to return to Rosal to cut cane. It is not compulsory. The Minister of Agriculture has made it very clear that it's optional if they want to continue working at Blairmont, they can continue to remain there. Or if they want to continue to work at Albion, they can continue to remain there. But unfortunately, they have decided to take strike action. So the gang that is involved in cutting cane at Albion, more, more, uh, some of them, more, more of, of them from the, the cane field area and the Kanji area, and also the one that was involved cutting canes in the Blairmont area, those two youngs are now on strike, and this, they have been on strike for the last 10 days. I ha, uh, they, they were in Freedom, at Freedom House on a number of occasions protesting, and they were at Kanji Turn protesting as well. And so the police asked me to meet with them at Freedom House, uh, where they were protesting, and I went, and I tried to find out what their demands were or what the demands are. They said to me at that time that they want to have now the severance pay. Now that they have to return, or they want to return to Rosal, they should also be entitled to the same severance pay that was given for the workers who had lost their job completely. They also are saying that they want the compensation of $250,000 that our government, when we came back into power, give to sugar, the retrenched sugar workers or to the dismissed sugar workers uh, who were severed. We had given them, the, our government had given them $250,000 each to, to help their families and themselves. And so they are also saying that they, they, they should be having that money as well. So it's basically two claims they're making. One is that they should be given the severance pay as well that was given to the workers who have lost their job now that they have to come to Rosal Estate, or if they want to come to Rosal Estate. And secondly, they should also be given the $250,000 that was given to the, the severed sugar workers <coughs> who are still unemployed. Now, I understand the demands have changed since I met with them. And from the reports I had, they have invited uh, Ramjatan, AFC leader, to come to meet with them, because this thing seems to be developing into a political way. It seems to be now developing uh, into, uh, into politics and not necessarily an industrial matter, because Ramjitan came and met with them this morning and promised to table 
a bill in Parliament. They don't know what kind of bill he will table in Parliament so that they can be able to get some kind of benefits as well, uh, even though they were working. So as the situation is now, they are also claiming that if we can't pay them the severance, we should pay them some form of compensation so that you know they would um, gain from uh, from the fact that they, uh, even though they were not severed, they were looking for compensation so that they can get extra money uh, for the fact that they were continuing working at Blairmont and at, um, at Albion. So having said that, um, AG, I would like you to comment on some of these things that I have said and to point out uh, what are the ramifications of these demands that the workers are making. And I should, should be able to point out that Gai, uh, Gai Suko has said very clearly to them that they do not need to come to Barozal if they don't want to. They can continue to remain to where they are working presently. And also the GAU, the union that they are involved in, they, they are not part of the, the strike action. So I would like you to comment on some of these things and address some of these matters on behalf of the government. So thank you very much, David. <clears throat> A wise man once said, those who forget their past are bound to repeat it. The history of independent Guyana will show that the sugar workers of this country have been the brunt of attack by the PNC throughout from independence right down. The sugar workers has been the brunt of attack by the PNC. And it is the PPP since independence that has stood by the side of the sugar workers for all these decades. If we are to go back to the recognition of Gau in the 70s, it took one of the longest strikes in the English-speaking Caribbean before Gau was eventually recognized as the union of the workers' choice in the sugar industry. Though Gau had commanded the support of all the majority of the union of the workers for years. Burnham administration imposed a sugar levy on the sugar industry for no apparent reason. That sugar levy was a tax only on the sugar industry to bail out other industries that were experiencing problems. Sugar at one time carried this country's economy. The sugar workers carry this country on their backs. As I said, they were treated in the worst possible way. And it was the PPP that stood with them and defended them and advanced their interest and advanced their welfare. When the PUP took government, Dr. Jagan promised, a promise that he had made for years before, could not have removed the sugar levy at the time because of the state of the bauxite industry. And that sugar levy was kept there to sustain the bauxite industry. When the PPP got into office, strides started to be made in the sugar industry. And the sugar industry obviously encountered problems when we lost the European market, right? And we have had problems since, but the PPP ensured that sugar workers' welfares were intact and the sugar workers had their job and they were working at attractive remunerative rates. When we were a minority government, and APNU, AFC, for the first time, got a one-seat majority and got a, a power to do anything in this country, the first place of attack was the sugar worker. The sugar industry became the first source of attack of that one-seat um, 
majority opposition. The first place that they began to use their power to cut and to vote down things in the parliament was subsidies going to the sugar industry. And they did so throughout that period from 2011 to 2015. Using that one seat majority, they defeated subsidies that we took to the sugar industry on every occasion. They voted down monies put towards DNI for the sugar industry and rice industry on every occasion. They cut the budgetary allocations to Gaisuku from the Ministry of Agriculture budget throughout their time in opposition when they had a one-seat majority. Notwithstanding all of that, Nagamutu and Ramjetan went to the order lines of these estates and told these people all manner of lies that they will expand the industry, that they will raise their salaries, that they will diversify, that sugar is too big to fail, and that they will do everything within their power to keep the industry alive. They campaigned on that. They went to the sugar workers and the estates and the order lines and the pay offices and, and the rallies, and they made these promises. I am sure people who are listening to me would recall the grand speeches at um, Wim Rally, where Ramjetan spoke, and Ramjetan made promises, gave assurances that the sugar industry will, is here to stay. The sugar industry will never be troubled by APNU, AFC. And from the moment they went into government, again, the attack was relentless against the sugar worker and against the sugar industry. They set up a commission of inquiry headed by Clive Thomas to look into the sugar industry. We said to them in opposition that we are prepared to meet and offer proposals. They rejected our, our offers. The, com the commission headed by, by Thomas prepared a report. That report did not recommend closure of any estates. Did not recommend that. Komal Chan was sitting in Parliament one day. We were all sitting in Parliament one day. I mentioned Komal Chan because he was the leader of Gahu at the time. And on the floor of the Parliament, the nation was informed that the Wales estate will be closed and 2,100 workers were going to be dismissed. Not a, a day of notice, no discussion with the union, no um, negotiations about severance, nothing. We heard just like that. An entire estate, 19 to 2100 workers, and thousands of people dependent upon that estate, private cane farmers, people who are doing contracts with the estates, the market vendors who sell at the market, all the cash crop farm farmers in that area, the entire West Demerara. Economy was now on the tatters by virtue of a decision that had no consultation, no prior information, a decision that even was inconsistent with the recommendation of the commission set up by President Granger. Then within a couple months after, Rosal was closed. Skeldon was closed. Enmore was closed. 7,000 workers dismissed. There is hardly an example one can point to in this hemisphere where 7,000 workers from the same industry was instant, were instantaneously dismissed. 
in the manner that these workers were. It was the PPP that stood with the workers. Sugar workers were committing suicide because they, don't, they didn't know where they were getting money to look after their families. Children couldn't go to school. We arranged hamper programs along with the diaspora. We organized feeding programs in the industry to help to assist the sugar workers. On the other hand, when we raise these matters in Parliament, Ramjatan led the onslaught against our efforts to speak for the sugar workers in the Parliament. There is a famous clipping on the Facebook where he is telling us, you want us to pump and pump and pump more money into the industry because they are supporters of the PPP. Well, we are not going to do that. That is what Ramjatan was saying to them when we, in the opposition, was trying to fight for the workers' interests. And more, the estate compound was sold. Wales, hundreds of thousands of acres of land were distributed and sold out to their cronies. The estate itself was co-sold as scrap metal. A hotel was opened at Skeldon. They used the senior staff um, compound and opened an accommodation hotel industry. Rosal Estate, they cannibalize it. They cannibalize it. That is what they did to the industry. They, they promised these workers who they dismissed that they will pay them severance. They never did. Ashton Chase, the late Ashton Chase, appeared for Gao and I appeared for the PPP because there were too many workers. We couldn't handle the number of cases. We filed class actions. I remember we filed two actions to take care of 2,100 workers at Wales. And we filed another two actions for the, the Borbis workers. These proceedings, Gaisuku under the APNU government with Ramjatan being there, didn't come and consent to judgment. They fought these cases. We spent months in the courts. They hired Ralph Ramkaran as their lawyer. And this must be known to the sugar workers. Ralph Ramkaran was hired by Gaisuku under APNU government to oppose severance pay for the workers in the cases that Ashton Chase and I filed. We won those cases. And then you know what they did? They, they took another period of time before they paid. And we got interest on the severance pay. And they refused to pay the interest. After we got the judgment, they paid the, only the severance pay. We got 6% on each sum because of the, the case took several months so the interest came up to several millions of dollars they didn't want to pay the interest we had to go back to court again just to get them to pay the interest that is what we did for the sugar workers during that period of time the only political party that stood on the side of the sugar workers and their family was the PPP and that's not long ago that's recently, months ago, just a couple of months ago. I traveled for five years from Georgetown to Barbies to hold a TV program to talk to the people of Barbies, in particular the sugar workers. I met with the sugar workers in Kanji several times. I met with them at 19 several times. We discussed their dislocation when Rosal was, was closed. They sat with me and Gao at bottom houses in Kanji. And they determined who will go and do factory work. Who want to do bond work at Albion. Who will go to Blairmont because of the distance. They worked out that by themselves. 
and they they said who will who will be who will take this severance pay it was always understood that once you continue to work you will not get severance pay because you are not severed they people made conscious efforts i know it was difficult i sat with the workers and their families when they said how they have to travel from gangaram to go to albion from 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 uh, in in kanji there to come to go to to blairmont we took all of that into account and they accepted it you know why it was difficult decisions but half a loaf was better than no bread because they had no other source of income that is what apnu did to them put them to their knees and we sat pretty with the coma um sipal da rain was there and the other leaders of gao in this area in barbies were present at these meetings and we worked out who will go back to work and who will get their severance and those who worked they continued to work and they got paid and we as a political party made a decision that once we get back into government those people who were severed and who did not get employment till 2020 from 2017 3 years of unemployment that we will offer them some form of compensation when we get into government a central committee of the people's progressive party made that decision and the general secretary announced it and once we got into government those are the people that we paid the 250000 dollars to that was the arrangement and every sugar worker knew or ought to know that and if they're telling you now something else they are not being truthful i was there from the beginning and i am speaking from first first hand knowledge that is why i am happy that gao is not lending support to the strike because gao invited me to some of these meetings zamal was present at some of these meetings mr i think jafar ali was present at some of these meetings was there yourself was there too adrian anamaya was was there and we discuss all these were not easy meetings to have they were not easy meetings people were behaving bad etc but at the end of the day it was a question of survival and we made hard decisions so i am deeply shocked first of all that they are going to create a new narrative to claim severance when they were never severed and worse yet that they are saying that i was part of some promise that offered them severance how will i offer severance to people who have not been severed i understand the law i went to court to get severance so i i must know a little about it i want the case too so that is a complete untruth and what is even more hurtful is the fact that they are going back to ramjetan the man who put them there in the first place these people like they don't learn and that's why i began the program by saying that those who forget their past are bound to repeat it ramjetan fool them and they they give them a one seat majority at the 2011 right. elections remember yeah. that was the first fooling that they got and then when they got the one seat majority they chop sugar more than anything else in the budget and then they still didn't learn they got support them again 2015 and they give them power in 2015 and they get more jamming and is one set of people who got to stand with them all the time it is the pbp and now they got going to ramjetan again ramjetan will use them and kick them like a political football you think ramjetan care about them when he had power when he had government and they were starving and they didn't have money then they could send their children to school ramjetan never meet them did ramjetan come and meet them no no he never did he was fighting to take away their severance not only did he dismiss them he was fighting to take away their severance so now he running to hear them you think he cares about them 
Rabjitan cares about himself and he cares about this political he, he, he sees this as a political opportunity. I am talking to you. You don't have to listen to what I am saying. Just, just internalize. Reflect upon your own experiences. How many times must your hand be bitten by the same snake? How many times? Ramjetan here that you're protesting. He flies down here like a carrion crow. He sees dead meat. That's all that he sees. You think Ramjetan care about you? Ramjetan has put you in the plight. I don't understand. This, these are unnecessary issues. So, look at what we have done since we've gone back. The... Agriculture Minister has disclosed that from 2020 to 2022, we have returned to work 1,500 sugar workers. 1,100 more are going to be start, will start work at Rosal or have started work at Rosal. And we are going to add more. And our promise to diversify is in progress. So we, Barbies is one of the poles of growth in our developmental agenda. We recognize the problems that you have in Barbies. And we are working assiduously to bring greater employment and greater opportunities to Barbies. But it takes time. The, the quarantine bridge is being fixed. The stadium, the malls, the hospitals that are coming here are on their way. Quite apart from the service that they will provide, they will provide employment. Hemp production will start. Soya bean, corn will start. Private farmers are going back to the lands. The Ministry of Agriculture and the Ministry of Finance working with the private cane farmers to put them back on the land, either to do cane or to do something else. Soya um, and, 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 and the, the other thing that I mentioned, hemp. So we have great opportunities. The oil, a lot of oil blocks are outside here. Outside on the, on the quarantine. They will have to start production soon. We are auctioning blocks. So there, are going to, there will be economic activities in Morbis. But, I mean, this kind of behavior can be continents and tolerated. This, 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 is, this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. People want severance because other people got severance. Other persons got severance because they merited severance by law. Severance was not a dole out. Not because the people are getting back jobs. You know, you envious of them. That always, they, this when this is about jealousy. It's about money. You're peeping your neighbor pot. When your pot was boiling from 2017 to 2020, those people's pot was not on the fire. You were earning. You may not have been earning much. They were, they were not earning anything. Consistently. They had to go make the ice. Some of them been away. They go get fish. They go plant garden. They go do all kind of thing. Whereas you had a consistent source of income. Oh, you jealousy people in for. 250,000, the money that we gave the, them as compensation, can't compare to the amount of money that you get for the period that you are working all the time. There's no basis to compare. So, regional chairman, I mean, I, I, I think that you have to have a frank discussion. It's a pity that I can't get an opportunity to talk to them. Yeah, because uh, I understand that the strike action is going to continue from the reports that I've had. Uh, Eugene Amidas, thank you very much for clarifying a lot of these issues. I think you've been very pellucid in terms of dealing with the issues that I've asked you to deal with this afternoon. I hope that the sugar workers are watching. I hope that they will be, they will be reasonable, and I hope they are not fooled by Ramjatan again. So Eugene, thank you very much for being in the studio with us this afternoon. 
And t- good afternoon. It's a Paul. pleasure, and if I raise my voice, it's because I'm really frustrated at this. Because I can't imagine that we have one set of people making the same mistakes over and over again, and then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is the PPP. We have to go back there and fix it. That's right. We have to, at the end of the day, there's nobody who will bother with them. Nobody will bother with them. We will have to go back on the ground and fix it. Ramjit Tan will go take a drink and he enjoy himself. Yeah. And the goddess guy, Baz Deo, who is an AFC... Don't upset me more. Team. When I hear them people, when I hear about so, Baz Deo, so, uh, so he is fueling it too. So we got we we to gotta let these educate these workers and let them know that the only party that has taken care of their interests and the interests of sugar workers in this country is the PPP. And I hope set, good sense <coughs> prevails. Let, let me say one thing, Chairman. Let me say one thing. And listen to me very carefully. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that Ramjatan can or will do for you. That's what I wanted to say. And that's the message we want to leave with you here this evening. Thank you for watching. God bless you. And have a good evening. Thank you, Richie.